But look, let's talk about PGG first. They've made a couple of role shifts. They've made a couple of uh, different lineup swaps as well. And are they bringing some players from overseas too? They are. We have Shernfire in the jungle. If you guys, uh, let me refresh your recollection. We have the best jungle that OC has ever produced from our region. And this is your man, Shern Tai. He has been the, I don't know, I can't, I keep saying the best, but he, I literally cannot over exaggerate how good he is because he has the best record of any pro player where he has four domestic titles mm. under his name. And he's also achieved number one place with the C9 Academy team. And now he is back in OC to compete with all of us. And of course, we also have some uh, very familiar faces of Dongy, which two G's? Yeah, it's his name. Two That's G's. Yep, because yeah. he's 2G Dongy. for you, G. Uh, and Violet and Appy, of course, coming in on that bot lane. And, and Chippy's, look, he, he was a coach. He's not a coach anymore. He's had enough. He's gone to the top lane. I like skinny. what he's done, though, because he would have been working extensively with Winter or Dongy now back in uh, last year Dongy. in the top lane and would have said, Dongy. look, mate, I've had enough. Uh, I'm coming in. Yep. I'm kicking you to mid lane. I'm going to show you how to get it done. So I feel like it's almost like what we just saw before with Babip and Aladoric, right? It's like we've worked together already. Let's play together now. Let's get it done as the boys. Okay, and my question is, for everyone on the couch, Winter in mid lane, mm -hmm. how's that going to go? What he played, I think his, his debut, if memory serves correctly, was like Chiefs Academy. I think his very first game was like a Nautilus med, and I was just like, I like this player. I'm, in, I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. And I always asked, when's the Azir going to come out? He never played in top lane, but he has to play in mid. So my theory is, He's not Winter anymore. Winter was the top lane player, and now he's a mid lane player. Had to swap the name, the Dongy. So that's probably why we've got the name swap coming through. Maybe we get to ask him at some point during the split. But let's have a look at GZ, Ground Zero. They're one of the new orgs on the block here of the LCO, but they've been around for a while. We've got Dante and Bulldog down in the bot lane uh, coming across from Direwolves from last year. Very solid duo down there, but we got some different names. Uh, Tron's a familiar one. He's up in that top lane. Rusty, uh, you have something to say about him, don't you? Uh, <laughs> don't try and bait that out of yes. me. Yes! <laughs> Tell me It's more. not gonna happen like that. Tron, Tron is someone that we have seen in the LCO before. Uh, I would say, again, to, to middling success, we've seen moments from Tron, but nothing too wildly successful at mm -hmm. all. He was playing with Mammoth. Uh, and this is a team that, like, I had seventh in my power rankings uh, for the season, and that's for the end of season. I think that they have some potential there. My concern is the player that you just mentioned and Emphis. I'm not actually sure how those two players will go because one's brand new and one hasn't had an opportunity to perform very well yet. Putting those together with Gooby, who is debuting, as I'm sure we'll be able to talk about Gooby in a bit, I, I don't see how that is successful without the inclusion of their bottom lane. Okay. There are some big names, some big players that we know, but are they enough? Because every bottom lane is good. Every bottom lane is good. For sure. And like like Rusty has been saying, Emphis and Gooby are a question mark because they are making their debut game up against PGG. But from what I know of Emphis, he doesn't have any previous competitive history, yeah. but he has been very uh, standout-ish in the solo queue uh, games I've had where he's a strict mage player. Syndra, Rise, yep. and all the, like Orianna maybe sometimes. He has so many mages in his pockets where I'm getting concerned about the champion pool for this new team because like I said, coming into pro play, it's not solo queue anymore. You mm. need to expand that champion pool. And same goes to Tron, where I think he is very good on the gangplank. But is that enough? Well, from what I remember, Tron was also a big Vlad player. Where's he Vlad was. sitting in the meta at the moment? Is it out, out, outside? Like, what's going on? You um, probably mm. want to be a Vlad one trick to pull the Vlad out. That's a bit how you going. Yeah, it's probably not. Especially because <laughs> right now, OP mid's at AP. OP jungle is at AP. Yep. So, so you don't got really, that doesn't exist to you top lane. Yeah, yeah. A little Correct. bit AD Correct. sided. Now, uh, we've got one of the gentlemen coming back from overseas. His name's Schoenfire, and we've got him on the line. Schoenfire, tell me where you've been, what do you know? Yeah, how you doing? It's great, guys. It's great to be back. Um, I can see Rusty and Key over there, the veterans. <laughs> um, you guys, hello as well. G'day. Hello, Sean Fai. It's been a very long time since I've seen you back in OC, but it's nice to catch up. So, you are back on a team with Chippies, a big throwback to 2017 Dials. How is the entire team doing? And what are your thoughts on the competition so far for 2023? Well, you know, every relationship, there's, uh, when we reconnect, you know, there's some old baggage, but we also got some synergy too. <laughs> so it goes both ways uh, with the rest of the team. 
it's uh, it's just about settling in because this is a new setup living in Perth. Um, yeah, it's so far so good. First week. That's good. What are your thoughts on the competition, though? Ah, well, I'm still new to the new to the competition. I was the king like four years ago, but it's a new year now, and uh, I still I'm still learning the names and everything. But uh, yeah, I'll figure it out eventually. Now, what's it like living in Perth? Because you guys have a, a gaming house over there, so you can scrim overseas. Has that been going well for you so far? Well, yeah, Penta has the best internet in Australia, so it's it's helped a lot. That is great to know. But uh, let's talk about a little bit about your history because you are one of the best players that we've ever produced out of OC, having four domestic titles in OPL, winning two years in a row. And of course, you came first with C9 Academy in that regular split. So um, you've been on the lay low recently. So what made you want to come back to OCE? Uh, pff, I mean, there's a bunch of things. Milo, boost, weak. Milo. <laughs> Of course, but of course. Mainly there's unfinished business here. Um, as you guys, if you guys know your history with us, we haven't been doing too well internationally. Um, and my, in my time, in my last four international competitions, they're all very devastating and disappointing. So um, the goal is obviously first to be the best in the region, but to go beyond that as well. Well, look, you've got to be the best in the West first. So let's see what you do up against Ground Zero today. Let's see if it's easy for you guys or not. Uh, Shonefire will let you go. Good luck in the game today. It is. It's crazy how mature he is now. Yeah. Like, oh, really? Because like, he just said it at the start of the interview. It was like, it's been a while. He's calling us veterans. But like, it literally has been that long mm. that that's a different human. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a different human talking to the Shonefire that was in my head. Because it's been that long. Like, that blew my mind. What did he look like? What, like four or five years ago? Is he just like fully... <laughs> that but 480 quality. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's been so long. And bold. Yeah, well, yeah. He made a movement and he even made Kings a uh, really good <laughs> ADC true, from back yeah. in the day to go bold. And I believe that's a buff. Even Draku went oh, bold. It seems that. to be proven as a buff. Well, let's yeah. flip the theoretical coin that was already flipped at some point earlier. And uh, PGG get to choose their sides. And they've gone red side this time. So... Uh, staying on the similar side to what we saw Chiefs win on earlier, so already getting a feeling of maybe a strong side uh, for some teams, you know, getting that counter pick. It, it worked for Kiss A's, so let's see if it works for PGG. And let's see if it works for you guys at home. Dare fan vote time. Get those Twitch points in up there. Let us know how you think this game is going to go so we can pull up the poll during the game and see what you think is happening. Uh, I'm going to let you know exactly what's going on with my prediction and my little dare secret sauce Right here. Mm. What did mm. I tell you? That tastes like a PGG win, I oh. think. That's what my prediction is going to be. What about you guys? You all on the PGG train for the first game? Yes, mate. We all had a little sip of that, Darren. It all told us PGG. I do want to highlight, though, RP is back on support. So yes. if you guys don't know about RP's player history, he used to play support back in LDL. Mm. And I believe it was a one-year experience. And he came back to OC as a top laner, I believe, or a mid laner. I think he went... Mid, top, support, mid or something. I yeah, guess it's, it's crazy. I think he's maybe the best player to have like consistently been good in more than two roles. Like that's how good he is. <laughs> he's played a different role every split, uh, every year of LCO. He just changes. Yeah. He's a chameleon. It went, yeah, it went top, mid, support, right? Something like I that. I swear it was yeah. top, mid, support. But it was LCO. support before all of that as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So back, back home, I guess. Is where he's going, down to the bot lane, him and Violet. And look, Violet, of course, let's see if he can hit his ultraviolet form. Mm -hmm. We've had this, you guys already had the conversation while the broadcast was on about the ADC role just being stacked as hell, mm -hmm. stacked as heck for the LCO. And we got Dante as well on the other side of the rift, and we know what he's capable of. So how is Violet going to go up against the young blood that is Dante today? What do you think, Kitty? Both very aggressive ADCs, to say the least, in that bot lane. But um, something that does concern me when it comes to this PGG roster is Chippies was re a renowned resource-heavy top laner where he picks the Camille and he picks all those carry champions. 
but it won't work very well if you're having a resource heavy ADC in that bot lane as well. And Violet being uh, the ADC of Peace previously, mm -hmm. he was given all those ganks and all those all that attention. So it, it might have some clashing uh, in I'll that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about Chippies though. Is since he's <sighs> learned how to okay. draft and be a coach, he okay. understands that tanks are a necessity. They're like without doubt, <laughs> without a doubt, he will be able to play the Cassante style. Plus, tanks at the moment are kind of fun. Like, there's a couple of fun tanks. Like Cassante can be a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. Dongy was big tank player up top. Is he still going to be a big tank player in mid? Is the question you guys can answer because Champ Select is ready. Let's see who is the best in the West. Well, we had the battle in Brisbane, and it now is coined the Battle in the West. Let's see what Ground Zero Gaming, the second new organization, uh, making their way into the LCL. Let's see what they can do up against PGG. I do think only one of these teams, right, has a gaming house actually in WA, but they are Western Australian organizations at the very least, so mm -hmm. it's still going to be the Battle of WA. Uh, kicking off this draft, first and foremost, Yumi Rise Azir, very specific ban in the Azir there, taken away from Pensanet.gg. I think can be decently strong right now as well, yep. to be fair, but. On the other side, Cassante, Maokai. You get used to seeing Maokai in the ban list. And Avaris taken away, which does open up Zeri uh, as a possibility. For anyone who has seen this Karma locked in first, I want to make it very clear that I'm sick of seeing this as someone that plays League, but Karma can be picked in mid with Radiant Virtue, and it is just a pest. It is so annoying. It's unkillable. It's a tank karma that has a support item rush. Yep. So and that item's broken. Oh, it's so it's broken. So, I mean, you you got junglers, tank junglers, Sejuani, well, the rest of all buying it. It's a 15 second cooldown, right, on the item itself, I believe. But karma's ultimate is about a 15 second. Like, it's just so efficient, right, for karma. So, to no be. surprises, Zeri gets put with a Yumi instead, which should put the karma into mid lane. Uh, the question is... Do you go for another AD carry in the jungle role, or do you look for something that rounds out your comp? Because this comp needs, I would say, something like a Sejuan. The Zeri can't just walk up and take a turret. No, I mean, slight range re uh, reduction um, during the, the, the preseason, right? A bit of a rework, a small one at that for Zeri um, to, to make it not as much of a pest, right? But still, obviously really, really relevant. All the shields, all the supporting cap uh, capacities in the world to try and make the Zeri have those 1v9 moments. But for sure, you're looking for another threat, another way to try and start the fight. You don't want a Zeri lightning crashing in to try and hit those 1v5 pentakill montages to say the least. PGG, however, they're going to run it back and say, Lushanami, it's incredibly broken. If you're going to be looking to try and build around a two-item uh, Zeri pop-off moment with the Enchanters there to buff, then we just want to beat you before they even materialize. Chuck and Avai will be an aggressive level six. We'll find our moments and we won't just find kills. We'll shove in waves. We'll take down structures. We'll claim objectives. Yeah, very much on the meta, right? Like, we're not going to see too many surprises as far as draft is concerned. You might see the occasional, like, in the first three, you shouldn't see anything wild. Four, five for red side, you can see some counters very specifically, uh, just because that's a, re a revealed draft from your opponents. You caught it as well, right? The the Kindred and the Graves band away. Yeah. You figured about another AD threat. Well, that's been removed now. So the possibility here is that you look for a second carry uh, from top lane, like a, a Gangplank perhaps for Tron, right? And just have like, it's a melee, so it's not going to be a Karma with a ranged champion. Realistically, what you want is Karma and winning jungler 2v2. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a Graves or a Kindred, but you see the Vi. Do you go for like a Lee Sin with the Karma now that you've seen an Ari? You know, like, do you look for something that's aggressive that just does high damage and can have high influence early? Uh, or, as mentioned before, is it more of like the, the facilitating Sejuani like style? Like something that gives them an engage or disengage tool just to let Dante 1v9, which is what this comp currently is about. It certainly does look to be that, doesn't it? Uh, you know, Wukong's in the mix of things and it is still being uh, possibly considered right now for a spin in the works. So we get a laning Gregus perhaps. So even a laning Wukong, right? Chippy's back in the fold of things. I always think about... Back in the day when I joined, and I thought, oh, this guy plays Olaf top. That's pretty he exciting. Does play Olaf right, top. maybe a Wukong laner. That would be quite exciting as well. But ultimately, on the other side uh, of the ref tip, as uh, Ground Zero Gaming, another team with another retained bot lane, right? Dante and Bulldog together. Looking to try and mature and showcase what they could do in a formidable, uh, you know, rookie season last year to see how they can run it back this time. I'm looking for this last pick here as well from pensanet.gg. We spoke about the changes. Kitty was very high on the Jace being buffed, yep. so it's obviously always going to be a point to look at. Uh, it provides a bit of range, but also provides a bit of lane threat into whoever is going to be up there. Uh, if it's a Gragas, it's a more free lane. And kind of the, the comp, I think both comps are a little bit weird in reality, right? Like Lucian, Nami, Vi loves going forwards. Arya can complement that. Jace doesn't necessarily fit. Doesn't 
really need to because he can just play a winning lane and control his side lane and then group with the team and just be strong. Yeah. Right? Like massive item spikes means massive damage spikes, which means he fits the comp in that respect. I kind of see this Jace as a way of almost like a warning signal, right? If you're grouped up, you're going to be taking massive amounts of poke. We find in an isolated member that's very low, that's a, that's the time to shine, right? That's the time to go jumping in with a spirit rush on assault and battery and you're charmed, you're dead, you're CC locked down. Yeah. Right? I, and also, I think it's like Jax is up, right? So keep that in mind. I think Gragas being picked is like, it doesn't, deny the Jax, but it makes Jax's life miserable. Sure. It's picked as a tank top lane to deal with Jax uh, more often than not. So that could be like them saying, well, I get it, right? Cassante's gone. I don't want to pick the Jax. Other options could have been like a Renekton, maybe. You've already got Vyan and an AD bottom for physical damage, but they opt into the, the more damage and lane focused option uh, that doesn't need ganks. So like Renekton's picked to gank that lane. I think they're going to play more for the Lucian Nami side. I agree. And I think this gives them a, an extra bit of range, right, to try and start things off with rather than fall victim to uh, the nuances of the slows and the CC, very much in close quarters that Agragas and Lulu can offer, uh, to say the least, right? So I would say in my mind um, that I prefer the PGG composition. I think it offers a little bit more ease of access, to mm -hmm. say the least, whereas I feel like Grand Zero's yep. comp, it's very much like, Dante, you're ahead, you're behind, uh, what next? Also, as a concept, poke is good into shields because it's not heals. So if you hit poke at the right time, they can't give that health back. They mm -hmm. just put shields over it. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially like a, a thick band-aid, but, <laughs> but it's a band-aid, which means the problem would persist. Uh, so I don't mind it. Uh, in saying that, the reason I bring up Renekton is Lulu, Karma, shields. Sure. Renekton W breaks shields. So sure. it's just worth considering. Uh, doesn't matter. It's not there. Jace is going to be there. And we are going to get into our second game here, Skimmy, with a big old Jace in the top lane. That we most certainly are. And uh, really hoping for more shenanigans, more rowdiness, really more so than anything. The first game, the opening match here for 2023, certainly delivered in the LCO. And no doubt we'll be hoping that the newcomers in Ground Zero can do just that into another stacked super team from the side of PGG, playing out from a facility over in Perth and looking to try and run back the woes of that split two finals at DreamHack. I think a big point to prove here from Pentanet. Chiefs come in, made a statement, game number one, said they are definitely here to perform. No hesitation, day one, game one. Looking like the tournament favorites, as per usual, the Chiefs roster are just that caliber. The organization has been successful very much so since the inception of the LCO. Ground Zero on the other side. Big GZ. I mean, they have a lot of young mechanical players. They've got some opportunities here to develop through the, the round robin, through the best of group stages as well once they get to there. But my concern with this team will persist until we're proven otherwise that it may just be a one carry team. Mm -hmm. It may just be that unless Emphis gets, you know, like a Syndra or a Rise, it's all about Dante. If it's all about Dante, how's he going to perform? As Emphasis has just found Narnia with that Q first and foremost. Yeah. How's he going to perform when his opponents in every game are of a caliber either equal or greater than he is? And it's a big concern because I think if we look at Violet, for example, in isolation, you think about his time in peace last year, how many times did we see them fall behind and really all in on the idea? Violet, 30 minutes, we will win a team fight because yeah, you're just better. Yeah. You're thinking maybe there's a similar story to be made out as a blueprint very early on without any real proof or any product to actually base that off in the Dante show as well. And I might just quickly add on that, that this is the first time PGG have been without Praetor as their starting AD carry, that illustrious roster that was formed around them. You've got the likes of Chaz and so on. They've all moved on to greener pastures, right? It's a brand new look overall going to a new year of a whole new identity. Well, more Eastern pastures, perhaps not greener. Uh, sure. <laughs> but that's definitely going to be subjective. Uh, we'll get into this game. We'll look at the, how the junglers are starting off their pass. It is just going to be top to bot side clears for both of them, respectively, so far. Again, you're seeing, to no one's surprise, Zeri, Lulu, Lucian, Nami. It's an aggressive 2v2 lane. It's based on level 2 as a power spike, first and foremost. Lucian gets to dictate how the lane goes. Appy tends to be more responsive. You can throw bubbles, right? If someone mispositions, we saw some good bubbles from Benvi. But the Lucian dashes, you put the tight caller's blessing on, and it is Lucian's lane to lose, and it's his timing to be made. And so junglers always go there. Shonefire, however. They certainly do. Shonefire possibly poking his head into mid lane for a second, but the wave is going to crash, and he was already standing on a wall. So that one was completely red, with Gooby hovering in the area as well. Yeah, Gooby also revealing himself. So instead of staying invisible, uses the Scryer's Bloom just to say, I know you're there which in a way is just information given to his opponents. Yeah. Instead of hiding his positioning, 
defense in that or Shurnfire can now save all the Wukongs right there. So act accordingly, bot lane. Well Wave set up well. Delay that recall. Doesn't really have much mana to his name right now, so another body slam He's like gone. that. Yeah. You'd have to be really respectful what Tron could do. Chippies might be. I if he has biscuits, he'd get another one right now, so he would be able to stick around if forced, but that'd be a very hard force. Bot lane bubble misses. Appy gets punished with no hesitation. Okay. Jungle okay. are going to get pushed in here. Dashing in, pops the shield, burst fire is active. In comes Gooby, going to dash into that brush. Going to be very patient here. But, Dante. Okay. Dante says, I don't need no jungler gank. I don't need low laning assistance. Rusty, if this is going to be a team built around me, I'm going to pop off. Hey, the, the first question is, can Dante pull a Violet? Well, the, the answer is Dante can stop Violet from pulling a Violet at the very least. Takes him down, 2v2 kill. Appy, it starts with the bubble missing. And then Violet goes forwards. But the Nami was already out of the play. A lot of question marks down there, but with no hesitation. You know, Dante flashing aggressively, flashing forwards. Two summoner spells still in the pockets of Bulldog. That's a huge win for them. Massive to say the least. Flash and uh, heal as well. He's running the Guardian, so plenty of mitigation if uh, the Lucian Nami do come back with a vengeance and a point to prove. But they are now down some crucial summoners as a result of that failed 2v2. And another pause. Hasn't yeah. been our day, has it? I mean, this was almost ceremonial. You come back. <laughs> welcome to Australian internet. Is the O's tax. Double boots of lucidity as well for mid laners in this game. It seems like we are very much in an ability haste centric meta. Mm -hmm. I spoke about this before, but having the Radiant Virtue there, it provides an insane amount of utility. People look at it and say it gives healing, but it also reduces ability cooldowns for nine seconds after the ultimate is cast, mm -hmm. which is why champions like Vi can go Kempunk Chainsword, Radiant Virtue, mm -hmm. and then just spam Q. It is a Q spamming build. I've even seen, I think it was Redemption as an item that is unironically built after that. So like you just become a support player. It's almost like Vice has become Trundle from the yeah. past, right? You yeah. Know, I just build support. I'm here to drop a pillar and uh, you know, job's done. Time for my team to pop off as a result. The it's Korean a Redemption time. Rengar builds that yeah. we saw running around there for a split. Uh, certainly is possible. The LPL has been building that one. So it's not something that if you see it for the first time, you should say, what is that? You just know it's been done elsewhere. But LPL is on a break right now, so people should be looking at the LCK as their Bible for mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. LPL got Chinese New Year for two years. And uh, two weeks. Two years, that'd be a long time. Two years, yeah. yeah why not? They're gone. That's <laughs> an exciting time, though, time, though, I think. <laughs> exactly. I think what an exciting time, though, to you know, watch back in, in LCO, right, to see all these new players, but then to see them mixed in with players like Shern Fire, which holds so much caliber about them, right, to sort of see how does the new gen mix with the old and... And, and likewise, I suppose, for the for the meta as well, whilst we are talking about a lot of these new champions, I think if you did watch any of the games last year, you'd be fairly comfortable with what you're seeing in terms of the champions. Yes, some new items, as you yeah. mentioned, with the Radiant Virtue, but I don't think anything drastic has changed. You're saying, hang on a minute, why Singe there? Why are we suddenly playing Cho'Gath mid, for example? We love a good Singe mid. I'm going to say <laughs> I have so much information on Singe mid, but I'm going to hold off until we see one, because I don't think we will. And then I'm just wasting my breath. Shenfire gonna look back mid. He swept the ward earlier. Sweeper from Gooby not gonna spot it. Emphis oh. finds himself a Vi. Actually finds himself a Vi to attack. Yeah. Slippery feet, doesn't he? Just squirms his way out of that one. Hints the tether back in retaliation. Gooby said, I'm not here to help you. I'm here to try and take these check-ins. And they have been leashed away. They're soft reset now though, right? It's not the hard reset. So they're harder to actually lock down. Finds it with the smite. We'll lose a couple of small ones as Shurnfire's pet's just going to walk away with him. Green smites for both junglers, of course, in this one. Do you call it green smites? There's only one smite. Challenging smite's gone. It's just chilling. We need a good term for this, aren't we? I mean, it is smite in general, but... Moss Stomper, I think, is the name of that one. They're going to become shieldy boys. Oh, yeah, he's a shieldy boy. All right, well... From top to bot, here we go again. We're just looking to really deny this jungle and make Gooby's life a living hell. Dongy on the scoreboard there with his first kill in his new role with his new name. Probably going to base after this as well because he has such limited mana. Karma just going to push this one in. Teleport not available. So for, for what it's worth, Ground Zero are going to try and push in some waves, get some farm. But this makes life difficult for Dante and Bulldog who found their advantage in the 2v2 just solo getting those kills. Now feel pressured by Vi being missing after their jungler dies. And Gooby, unfortunately, it feels like a bit of a clinic being put on in the jungle position. Shurnfire showing what information can actually provide. You reveal yourself trying to counter the mid gank. 
Well, we're now we've just got priority, so we're going to you. And he can't reset. He's in so much trouble. chippy has been emphased. He really has been. Nicely done. I mean, Tron's been keeping him busy. Been he has. forcing those bases. Oh, and just a fraction too late there to try and deny that one. Or not even even wanted that fight, but he'll pick up a lane tax instead. I think he would have taken the fight, but with the goal of going for the wave, as we will not talk about that <laughs> cursed minion that just went awry. Because uh, at the same time, Dongy's been pushing mid, so delaying the recoil would have been nice. I think we are at a point where everyone's going to reset. They're going to get some extra clears and experience for junglers, which means six is just around the corner. Shonefire getting there first. He's able to steal some minions in top for that experience as well. Mm. Gooby needs six to have more of an influence when it comes to these plays, but are we ever going to see a Karma and a Wukong come together collectively and control anywhere on the map? Or is it just a case of surviving and trying to get to team fights when Dante's on the map and they've just altered down here? Well, they certainly have. Dante's clearly found himself in a moment where he thinks I've got level six advantage. It's time to be aggressive, whether or not that's really amounted to anything. The health bar's still topped up and healthy. If anything else, it's helped shove the wave in so they can go for a quick reset back. Well, on the flip side of the map, Schoenfire's going to entertain the idea of going for the first Herald instead. So that means that Ground Zero have the inline track with both junglers keeping after for these major objectives. Yep, just going to be a transaction of these objectives. Herald already taken. Doesn't necessarily need to be forced as a summon anywhere right now as far as plates are concerned. There's just a, a few of them outstanding for all of the lanes. No turret going to be immediately broken. Also, Herald a little bit reduced damage between seasons. Uh, so it's not going to be guaranteed plates the way that it was. It's pla uh, a couple of auto attacks to get the two plates. Mm -hmm. And Chippy's still struggling. One thing as well for this Gragas, it's not a tank Gragas. Yeah. He sees the Jace matchup, knows that Jace plays primarily from range and has gone for the Comet Lost Chapter build. Can build the Everfrost as well, can go tank after. But it gives him so much more control of the lane. He's able to match the poke of a Jace, but has a passive that gives health back. And so does control as long as those Qs connect, the mm -hmm. 1v1. Yeah, passive is a little bit insane, especially when you've got uh, the ability to control a lane like this. You're never really going to get bullied out. And so if it came down to a Battle of the Biscuits, then that's not really uh, one you're going to lose out on as well either. So it just really feels like every time we popped our head into the top lane, the lane has been pushed against Chippies. And that's a, that's a big thing and a big note that we should highlight here for, for Ground Zero 10 minutes into this game. Yes, it is only even, but it's two to one in kills. And if we look at why those kills have happened, well, first and foremost, Dante and Bulldog get a 2v2 kill. Yep. That's a big positive for the team because they're expected to be strong. The second one is Emphis roaming from mid, playing towards Tron, who has been winning and controlling his lane. So those are solo laners that we have questions about actually rising up to the occasion. The challenge is Gooby, who so far has been kept down completely. I guess you could say they uh, emphasized I mean, I the wouldn't. advantage in the top lane? I wouldn't. Well, I just did. So have at it. <laughs> I've said it. Can't take it back now. But I mean, you can. Well, I can tell you about the Herald, which is just headbutted with a turret. And they're going to claim two uh, plates as a result of that. So that's a nice little bit of pocket change there, opening up the piggy bank to try and give this uh, Lucian some way to feel aggressive, to feel at ease, to say that I can actually challenge this Zeri now. The base to be seen from PGG as well as ooh, Dante. Dante's not going to let that happen, though, is he? Tidal Wave goes out. It's Lisa a triple knockup. We're at Wet and Wild. Good disengage. Very nicely done. Just going to go back. I think I feel like that again is... It's Grand Zero saying, we're going to reset in a second. Let's push on. We know that they've dipped out. They've gone back to their respective lanes or base in the Ari and Vi respectively. So we are just going to be aggressive and see if we can pick you off. Catch you trying to push that wave in before you get your reset. Don't find the kills they're after. Don't get some of the spells out of them either. It's really just a small transaction of health. Mythics now being completed, though, is the talk. That is the big talking point, because if you look at what it means now for those two uh, returning, resetting AD carries, well, for Dante, he comes back with completed Tier 2 boots. The Berserker Greaves are there. As for Violet, no boots at all, not even the brown paper bags. He said, Gale Falls, item number one. I need more mobility. I would need more burst. I need some kind of way to try and shut the Zeri down. And at the moment, Shernfire has unleashed Dongy onto the rift. Gooby's trying to play counter gank at the moment. He's just trying to find where Shenfei is going. Mm. But every time he walks into a lane like this, if they don't get a kill, then he's just, again, giving information. Look at Shenfei. He's already at the enemy Raptor camp if he wants to take those away. Even if he's spotted, it doesn't matter. Wukong's been seen top lane. 
And you can't answer back. What's your bot lane going to do? Looking to try and just come to this one? I don't think so. Sing on another ward. Uh, gives so much availability for the likes of Appy and Violet now to be aggressive. Now to make it a 4v2. Now to force out a TP to try and force this fight to try and work in their favor. TP coming in only just now. Can they get a kill? Shun fight. Soaked up a storm. He's done his job perfectly there. Now they need to disengage away and leave themselves intact. Zap is there. Doesn't have the AP ratios, but still packs a punch. Exhaust onto Emphis. Have you ever seen a less scary Karma right now? The Tether just out of range. But now trying to find a straggler in a lone Nami. And it'll be a slow storm. But it might be a kill all the same. Just breaks nah. the Tether far out. Gooby just used his W to get over the wall it's as well. Biting. He's been charmed. <laughs> Shurnfire gets the Gromp and gets out with his life. Every single member of Pentanet.gg just weathers that advance. One HP to their name. Doesn't matter. They'll slip through the cracks. And through the creases, they'll get themselves out. What a play from Pentanet. That's a dive that felt dicey at almost every moment. But they could just a little bit faster then Ground Zero can keep up with. Gooby doesn't get there in time. And again, push comes to shove. Gooby shows top. Look what had happens bottom. Maybe, you know, in a different world, a different universe, that, that dive isn't as successful, but it doesn't matter. That's happened because Gooby goes top in an attempt to either counter or make a play that can't happen. Absolutely, and it just stresses the importance of, of vision in general, right? You've got wards down, yeah. but it doesn't matter. Just the presence of seeing that you can't actually answer us member for member. And Dante plays this really well. Dodges out on Vi's Q, but Shurnfire correctly and very astutely chooses to go towards the Lulu, which gets him out of turret aggro range. Rest of the team follows through and try as they might. Emphis is a support build karma who is exhausted. Uh, <laughs> that means useless. And quietly, that was a huge two-man bubble there by Abby. And I think very. ultimately, if that bubble didn't land, there would have been those yeah, casualties. That's it. But they rise to the occasion. Their experienced players, Gooby. Oh, we're in. Flash Cyclone. And that's a flash and a dash to disengage away. A bubble not to answer back. And that's an ultimate with a wild growth to save Gooby. Here comes Shurnfire. I think he bit off a little bit more than you can chew. Shurnfire doesn't have flash, but he can just as punch in. Receive the buff from Nami. And I stayed out of kill. Gooby dead for rights. Oh, Tante skirting away. Can they find it? He's bleeding. Dongy says, I'll get this one. Don't worry, the shield evaporates, and so does he. He wants more, he wants a reset. He'll die for his crimes. Abby can tank this. Unbelievable. Can Emphis get anything he can't do? No. Is it a support karma? He's got no team it's to support. Wonderful team play here from Pentanet. They're just running circles, absolute rings around Ground Zero right now. It's a clinic. They're just showing how to push their absolute limits and abuse the fact that they have numbers there first. Dongy is four and zero. And why is he 4 and 0? Because Shurnfire puts pressure in mid, allows him to clear waves, get priority, and then come down here first. He's now so far ahead that he can do it by himself. We watch this play again. Gooby finds an engage, but Appy still has flash. Violet, because all he has to do is dash to safety, turn and burn with the culling damage, just gets what he's after. Dashes forwards, Gooby 100% dead here, no W to keep him alive, and Dante. Good little dash to get himself to safety. Shurnfire, I'm not sure if he tried to just E the turret or just miss the Q, but either way. One HP to his name, compliments of an airy shield from Appy pressing the Tidecaller's Blessing. And then the comms here. Turret damage gets reset because he goes gold. Gets the support that he needs from Appy. Very nicely played. Perfect. Textbook stuff there to try and demonstrate what a perfect dive can look like and how a team can play around you to get you out of harm's way. A stopwatch which found infinite value. More so than 650 gold will ever net you, I tell you that much. And as the dust settles, the turret now crumbles. Lucian Nami unleashed on the map, RE40 with one and a half items as well. Very much poised to assassinate anybody. And this means that they have so much control over the rift, not currently on top side, but through the red side quadrant of the map. No longer really belonging to Ground Zero. After this base, after these item purchases and resets, Chippy's even walking mid to secure the Drake. Gonna look to take away some jungle camps. This is how much it doesn't belong to them. The only advantage currently existing is there's a Herald still to be summoned. Gooby doesn't need to. They'll still just get the turret. Tron, he's given, he's thrown him a bone. He's not going to give up this one without a fight, I tell you that much. He's holding his own. And he's showcasing that, yes, Chippy is a phenomenal top lane player, but perhaps that uh, coach the player arc isn't working out for you ever so nicely in this opening threat. I think more so than anything, Tron's got a point to prove here, right? Played split one for Mammoth, then got benched as the sub for the second half, then wants to showcase that, hey, I've got a starting position once again for another year in the LCO, and this is what I can actually offer. Certainly doing his best to prove exactly that. 22 offer. 
unfortunately for Ground Zero, what they're offering is not enough to keep up with the dance that Pentanet are putting on the pace. Extremely high. They find their advantages. They were always a pretty fast team, even last year. I think adding a, a little bit more, because, because well, first and foremost, it's not Balkan Yuri. Uh, adding a little bit more cerebral, slower play to the team. Uh, and through, <laughs> through we the did new enjoy additions. our Balkan Yuri We games, loved a good honest. Balkan Yuri game. We loved game. to see it. You just knew you were in for a banger every time. We're still getting the bot dives. So we certainly are. We're happy about that one. Also playing from WA, they'll have, a, I would imagine, a much higher ping at the moment. Yeah, we'll be curious to see what they get. 60 something. It would be in that region. Culling goes out nice and early. Nice disengage away. Wave goes out and does miss completely, but it doesn't matter because they've got the back of insurance of a Vi jumping across the wall and taking you out for free. A disengage away, a cheeky heal on top. And it really is that easy. And I mean, it just feels to me as if Gooby's saying, I'm finding an angle, we're going in. Hang on a minute, it's not working. I'm in trouble. And for anyone who has watched competitive league around the whole world, you see a Zeri, usually you'll see a Vi in response because it means no matter how slippery you are, you're guaranteed to be locked down. And the Q cooldown that can come from this Chainsword build, especially with the Radiant Virtue, is like three seconds. Mm -hmm. That's more often than a Zeri can dash. So something's going to hit you. And if something hits you, the follow-up is there with no hesitation from the rest of the team. No doubt Dante's saying, just wait, guys. I get my Navori Quick Blades, and somehow we scale into this one where, hey, I've actually got enough ability haste to match you, but I think you're really praying that three items just miraculously happens. Then it just becomes a fighting game. <laughs> we saw some pretty hectic LCK performances as well. I think it was vital. Uh, yesterday, oh, yeah. who was playing the Zeri, former Direwolf. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 2019 or... I want to say 2020. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's been so long it ago. Been, it would have been when I first started, at least. Yeah. He's now playing in the LCK. Uh, he had the Zeri game actually popped off. But it's very hard to do. And not everyone in here is an LCK player. I know that's shocking information. But it turns out... <laughs> A huge revelation. Wow. LCO's not LCK. Clickbait. One letter off. True. Alphabet Andy. Alphabetically. Yeah. <laughs> well, another turret falls on down, and I think now they can look to try and cauterize the wound, which was top lane, right? Chippy's uh, he's held his own, but it really hasn't been a laning phase. He'll be too happy to uh, you know live back on. But his team is there with the amount of pressure swarming from bot to mid to guarantee that every single outer turret belongs to them. So much control, just so much presence right now, right? And the, and the funny thing is for, for Shenfire, for Dongi, for the rest of PGG, it's not necessarily about forcing the play, though they have forced plays in bottom. It's about clearing vision and just assuring that their play is going to be successful. Herald to be summoned was probably about to expire, but from the looks of it, we'll get a charge off. Not a massive one, not going to be a full turret, but nonetheless gets the charge off in mid. Ah, oh, this is it. Dante. Violet's looking for the one shot right now. He's got nowhere to go, Dante. He's a lone wolf in a big, big ocean. There's the charm. There's the second kill. Bot lane of ground zero simply does not exist. And that is the power of a rapid fire cannon with a Nami and a Gale Force to travel literally the charm entirety the of the map. Dongy just trying to use the last of those Ari dashes on the ultimate resets, but has no mana. And when all is said and done, he's going to go back to base. Likely teleport in as the Baron gets kicked off by Pentanet.gg. Looking like powerhouses in the league at the moment. And a second game with a 20-minute Baron spawn with a team right there ready to take it. We'll see if they can go for a 25-minute win. The lead that they've built up. 4K is not an insurmountable gap. This would... <laughs> right. We had a light show in the back there for a second. <laughs> Cheeky Defcon trip. Celebrating the Baron being picked up. And now Midwave once again becomes the point of contention. It has belonged to PGG with the amount of presence you highlight. Ground it's Zero also need to try and find a way to try and get those kills, get those bounties. It's just the Lucian army tax. Like in reality, how did that play happen mid? Well, they got too close. It's just, you know, don't be Icarus against the Lucian army. You fly too close, you're actually just going to get burned. Yeah. It certainly, in my mind, changes your perspective of what is considered safe. Because you would think, with this amount of space, this amount of distance, there's no way. But safe going, is culling you, range. You're going bush to bush. Yeah. Safe is culling range, but he also has dash and gale force. <laughs> yeah. So being in the middle of mid lane, when it's open and it is a 2v2, very dangerous. And it's really, it's really hard to sit here and say Dante or Bulldog, Bulldog did anything massively wrong. Right? Like... They got a 2v2 kill, but now they've just been pressured. Mm. They've been relentlessly pressured, and now Violet and Appy are ahead. They've earned their position, they've earned their lead, but to continue to play this out is just so tough. 
Yeah, it's a little bit agonizing given the fact that they have so many supporting tools to allow this area to flourish and it's just not being able to truly materialize their way. They would have loved for it to evolve from the bot lane success into a mid-game moment. Turrets are falling and more so in favor for PGG as they do have that Baron buff. Dongy gonna look to try and push in bot lane. Mid inhibitor's just gone at the 22 minute mark. And no contest, no pressure, no slowing it down. Gooby's able to dash out there, but the Jace Gate Shock Blast keeps them humble, keeps them grounded, and another turret. One tap away from being gone. Dongy did use his ultimate in there, but look, they got what they're after. They got more. And a composition that's built around protecting Dante. He's now one and three with one and a half items compared to what's about to be three items on Violet. The comp can't do anything. There is no damage left, nothing in comparison to their opponents. So they do get run over. That's just how this plays out. Incredibly hard to try and mount their assault, their comeback back into this game now for sure. But that's that's the most important thing. If you're going to build a composition with a Karma mid, with a Gragas, that yes, he's building AP, but that's got limits in what it can provide. And a Wukong that's a team fight centric jungler, and your bot lane's being dove, if you're not there to counter, you have failed. Mm -hmm. It'd be very interesting, the VOD review session, I'll tell you that much. Looking back how it all started with that initial gank in top lane with the vision there for Schoenfire just to quite handily walk in and say, I'm going to gank your bot lane, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. It was it was a true psycho dive, but it was very successful. They had the numbers, they had the confidence. That's all you need sometimes. A bit of vitamin C. A bit of sunlight. Keep yourself healthy, both in game and out. Chippy's going to pressure the midwave right now to make sure <laughs> that those inhibitors uh, will feel the wrath of some super minions. The rest of the team going to keep the side of ground zero preoccupied in the top half of the map. It's really rude by Violet. Gooby hunting for an engage there because the Lucian Ooh. was half HP. Dashed into their face, Gale forced out so the Gragasol didn't pull him in. Baited the ult out of Tron though. Lost 60% of his HP for it, but has got an army. Nothing lost. Now we group up together, and uh, it really does feel to me like Pentanet are asking their opposition the question, what is your next move? Because you're up against the clock now. Pressure will continue to go through this mid lane, steadily building up in the bot lane as well. And they are just surrounding them, forcing them to turtle. I mean, yeah, they've been hung up, strung out. They've been picked apart. Emphis, tankier, karma build than normal. Doesn't feel like it. Gooby. Meant to be engaging for the team, just gets body blocked by Schoenfire, who is also a tank, by the way, does have that Radiant Virtue build. He presses R and then just runs you down relentlessly without death, and there's not enough damage to kill him. Unless it's Dante doing it by himself, and that's usually the one locked out. Here we go, jumping in, Gooby looking for that moment right now. Cyclone knocks them up with a clone active as well, but he has to disengage away, he's already down to 20%. That's not what you want to see, but by the time he's disengaging away, it's only then does something like a, a Zeri start to feel empowered enough Ooh. to make their move great? Ooh. Cast, not even better body slam! Dongy could be in trouble. The perfect ADA in ruins right now. Spirit Rush, the last charge was just enough. And the wild growth to try and knock them up just wasn't close enough. A hey, fair play to Tron, but unfortunately the game elsewhere, an inhibitor falling. It's going to be the third of the game and the supers will start to follow. Memphis in a bit of trouble here once again. Emphis dead to rights, beautiful bubble, beautiful kill, he survived! He's living with a shield! The biggest band-aid, the biggest bait, and the best protection you'll ever see right there. Chippy's the hero really amongst it all to try and finalize at least one kill to celebrate here. And Dongy now adding that final nail in the coffin, giving them the supers across the board. And unfortunately for Ground Zero, they start to find their footing a little bit too late, and it might just be a result of a constrictive map making it easier for them. They've been well and truly kept down. As if you don't see Ionian Boots of Lucidity, it seems to be a shock at the moment. Even the Lucian, straight in there, looking to be a spell slinger. Haste is just so good. Speed. It yeah. is the best stat. Haste none. is fantastic. It's it broken. Five Boots of Lucidity. I've always thought, if you've got haste and you've got movement speed, what more do you need? Damage. You run fast, I mean, sure. You need damage. But hey, when you're ahead, though, you do damage. More haste, more damage. <laughs> I mean... If you're good and have <laughs> have damaging abilities. Haste is my best. You're sitting stat. here with a Karma Lulu it. and you say more haste is more damage. Is it? For sure. Or is it just more shields? Well, another Baron. Right on time once again. 
very hard for Grand Zero to work their way out of the space to even mount an assault, even put up a sniff, really, to see what they could do against it. Elder Dragon up as well. Oh, sorry, not Elder. Another Dragon to be up as well, Mountain. I'm going to say Elder. Baron taken. I think this should just be the final nail in the coffin. In reality, Ground Zero's best choice here is to look for a Miracle Engage that has enough damage. Don't know how they'll find it. Violet probably has to instantly die if they want any shot, but Chippies is really a second ADC at the moment. Here we go, jumping in right now. It is Dante who tries to do wonders with the Lightning Crash, but it's Tron that's removed straight away. 6-0-2 right now, Tommy looking ever so clean in a new role. And Schoenfei skirts the line between death and madness and outright brilliance as he lives a little bit too long, but I say it and he dies. Cast a curse, you'll love to see it. Here we go for a little bit more action, and Lucian now opens up with another kill to his name. The bubble misses, but the kills do not. The Nexus itself in shambles in two very quick games by two of the favorites. Absolutely. We kick start, split one of the LCO for 2023 with our first and second predictions for most of us. Most of us, not all of us. Finding very cohesive, clean victories. Again, never really in doubt. At no point did it look like they were going to lose. And a really good uh, debut, I suppose, from Schoenfire in how sure. he was able to play the map. Uh, and a couple of, I think, weaknesses, but like more just exploited moments from, from Gooby, who shows himself on the map, gets punished. But it's also the team of Pentanet working with Schoenfire to punish him. It's not just yeah. a jungle 1v1 that Gooby lost I or agree. anything. No, no. But was picked apart very handily by a Bit of a masterclass, Mac. Bit yeah, beautiful. It certainly was. Uh, Kitty was saying it was more like watching the orchestra watching this game with PGG, the way that they beautiful. executed those dives in the bot lane. <laughs> oh, it was just all thought out, you know, getting that Zonia's perfectly timed as well. You got Appy tanking the tower. Oof. Chef's kiss. Little chef's kiss. It was good. It was very it was beautiful very nice. and it cleansed my eyes from all the solo queue <laughs> I've been enduring for the past few weeks. Yeah. But yeah, congratulations to PGG. Very clean game from them. Mm, it certainly was. Now, uh, Chippy's doing a really good job. And, and it seems like him being in the rift with them, you, you can see that the macro and, and the fact that everyone was almost always where they needed to be. And, and you can tell that that's probably just from having a coach in there, having that extra say. And all these individuals on PGG, you know what they're capable of. You know that Schoenfire is bringing a lot of experience as well. And let me elaborate on why my eyes have been so beautifully blessed by PGG. So specifically the second tower dive, which I believe happens right here at 15 minutes, it was so nicely executed. Schoenfire has so much mobility, locks down the, I believe, jungler who was already low HP. Dongy has so much presence in this bot lane as well, constantly roaming towards his bot lane where I believe the Zeri and Lulu ended up 0 and 6 at one point into the game. And this tank and just the communication coming out of PGG, beautiful dives overall. And of course, with PGG's comp being so slippery and so much mobility, having that gap close onto the Zeri, that means you can't make a single mistake. And of course, we saw Dante overstepping in that mid lane and it was wellfully punished. And of course, uh, taking a look at the items build, we have the Radiant Virtue coming through on the, onto the Karma mid lane, which um, it does work in some scenarios, but I don't think this was a game where you should have built it because you have Ari who's going full AP and she was constantly getting those waves pushed into Karma where Gooby never had a duo in his jungle and we could see a very uh, a very strong presence from both Dongy and Shonfire the entire game where it affected the bot lane as well. Now, I had some questions seeing Dongy locking in the RE there, but they were all answered in, in very good fashion. I was like, how's he going to go? What's going to happen here? And he just completely dominated the Rift. He was just roaming bot yeah. constantly. Uh, feels bad for Dante and Bulldog. They were getting targeted, but it feels like, you know, they were the experienced players here in the GZ roster. So you kind of target them, then what else is left, huh? Yeah. Not, not too much at the moment. They're also the win condition, right, of this yeah. team. So you're building Karma to protect them. And, and that is something that needs to hit the drawing board here for Ground Zero because they built this comp around Dante carrying and then they got dove and didn't have the reinforcements there necessary. Emphasis has to be there first every time. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to sacrifice things from yourself uh, to protect win conditions in competitive games. And that's something that solo queue players, which they are young rookies learning how to play competitive, will take some time to adapt to. Funnily enough, this reminded me so much of that peace game when Violet finally came back last split at the uh, split two last year. 
and he did not get to play the game. He just got completely targeted by Chiefs, I think it was. They mm. were just destroying him, and now he gets to be putting Ground Zero on the other end. He's like, I've seen this strap before. We should run this. We should just <laughs> keep on smashing Dante till he can't be smashed no more. But look, uh, it was a very... Very intense welcome for GZ to the league. You know, a couple of those individuals, their first times playing. Uh, need to see a bit more from them. But look, Chippy's doing a decent job in the top lane, even though Tron, you know, kept him at bay for a while. Gapped him at the start of the game. But overall, look, even if you win your lane, doesn't mean you win the game, right? Yep, and um, unfortunately in this current meta, bot lane gap is team gap, and we saw that. Although Violet did get ganked early on into the game by overstepping and overtrading, uh, just the amount of pressure that Shurnfire and Dongy was able to provide to that uh, high resource lane was so impactful. And although, you know, Jace did get ganked by Empress, he did make a very successful gank and got a kill on the Jace, but it didn't mean too much because you have a Gragas that's going whatever frost and I, I don't remember the other item but he's not a high damage and um, of course like Rusty said Radiant Bird Tree flowing south of the water a lot of utility coming out of the karma but your Zeri is in the dumpster mm. now what do we think about Bulldog on the Lulu so it, did we expect him to play something a little bit less enchantery something a bit more engagey because that's kind of how I remember Bulldog. You don't get really much of a choice at the moment. Mm. The, the meta is if you have Zeri, you're Yumi or Lulu. Yeah, and yeah. if you choose you're not to do that, you're losing... Mu yeah, you have to be a little kitten for your AD carry or you lose significantly faster. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, Bulldog, I feel like he was he was serviceable, but like it was a losing situation, so it's hard to stand out. Yeah, it, it was hard as well. Kitty, you were talking about how in the mid lane, you know, Emphis were just constantly pushed in, so just couldn't keep up with those rotations from Dongy. So, mm. ah, little, oh, it's okay. We have so much space. How do you even touch I'm me? so like, sorry. So I got a bit emotional over couches. that because <laughs> Gooby's personal space was just constantly getting invaded by Shonfire. Like, please, Shonfire, one meter distance. But, uh, of course, <laughs> if you want to win, you got to get in, up in there and give a well, switch. How far is it to Perth? Because it's about, what, like 4,000 Ks? How long is it on a flight? It's like six, seven? Mm. It's a bit of time, eh? Anyway, that's where Dongy is. Uh, we got him on for an interview. Dongy, do you know how far away Perth is from the East Coast? Because you morning. had to make that trip, didn't you? Oh, yeah. It's like third world, like region, but <laughs> <laughs> not, not far. <laughs> Beautiful. How does it feel winning that first game and uh, having a spectacular performance there in the mid lane? Um, today, yeah, we knew we were going to win. I didn't know like half of their like players, except like Dante and Bulldog. They're pretty good, but... Me and Shen can mid jungle gap every team, so we didn't really care. We saw a lot of perfectly executed bot lane dives from the side of PGG. So obviously you guys are very happy with how it went because no one died as a result of, I believe, three kills. So what's the communication like for those pre-planned uh, plays? Um, usually Shen calls for what wave we're playing and then I listen to him, yeah, and then we get the wave first. And we move, move them both. We practice this a lot in our scrims. Oh, well executed. Absolutely well executed. How's it feel living in uh, another, even though you were on PGG before, you're in Melbourne in that little player house. Now now you're on the West Coast. Is it is it is it fun, you know, living with a whole different group of players? Oh, for sure. Like, I thought my teammates are toxic before I joined this <gasps> team, but everyone's really wholesome, really nice. <laughs> Like especially like Violet and Shonfire, they're really nice teammates. And living here is just fantastic. Weather is really great, really sunny. Sometimes it's way too hot, but I think it's perfect to live here. It's okay. We were feeling a bit hot and steamy over that Ari gameplay just yeah. now. But uh, please, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the uh, mid meta so far? Because you made that change from top lane. Uh, mid meta is right now just like Mages or just Akali Silas. It's pretty like all easy champions. But from t uh, personally, I think top lane champions are a lot harder. So it was really easy to learn these champions again. Oh, super easy. Now I'm going to tell that to every mid laner we see on these interviews. Uh, mm. It's come from the horse's mouth. Now look, Dongy, we'll let you go. Uh, get ready for tomorrow and we'll see you then. Uh, see you guys. So, yeah. What a way to so open up an wholesome. interview. Yo, how's, uh, how's Perth? <laughs> 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 That's Perth. Yeah, all right. Mate. Third world region, but it's all right. It's a whole different region. Got to love it. But look, now it's time to talk about the Dare MVP. Who are we giving it to? Was it the man in your screen? Was it Shurny in the jungle setting up a lot of that success? I feel like Shurn 
Spotify was like the composer of the orchestra, if I'm going to follow your uh, mm. analogy from earlier, and I think he was like the largest proponent of why they succeeded. But to contrast that, if I was to give anyone else, I would say Appy actually played mechanically extremely well yeah. and was basically the reason that the dive succeeded. So Bubble I can't look past exactly. Appy's performance for yeah. who got the most valuable right in that game. Okay. Everyone looked so goddamn good in that game, especially with the players around that bot lane dive, right? Everyone stood out. Ari made perfectly uh, dive, oh, sorry, hitting every skill shot, mm -hmm. so it was a perfect dive. Obviously, Shonfai orchestrated the entire thing where yeah. he pre-planned every wave, and that's not something we see a lot in OCE, thinking that far ahead as a professional player. But mm -hmm. yeah, something that we should really watch out. But um, RP getting all those skill shots as well. The We're double bubble. Bias, to be fair. We, yeah, are, we support are support bias. bias. Hello, but, uh, ARAM bias. <laughs> Can you please tell me who you think is um, the dairy? Jace is good at ARAMs. I think I think it's the <laughs> I think it was the Shenfai. He just he just mogged everybody. He just got in there <laughs> and he just took him down a peg okay, and said, well, I was the king of O's for a reason, boys. We'll hear about it on Twitter if we've gotten it wrong. Sorry guys. Uh, yeah. but I'm gonna go with Shenfire as well. The fact that they're playing with oh, wait, that's two V two right playing now. Playing with the way oh, Production. Uh, you, paper scissors no, rock. YouTube, YouTube. Paper scissors no, 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 you two paper scissors rock. I'm go. in control. We go on go. Okay. On 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 rock. Pa oh, oh, we go on rock. On rock. Okay. Ready? Paper, scissors, rock. Okay. Oh, wow. Jungle Junglers. Junglers. He's cutting down jungle. <laughs> Congratulations. Journey. Never make Shirt me do that fire. again. I suck at paper, scissors, rock. <laughs> I've never <laughs> won guys. paper, scissors, rock on camera in my career. That's <laughs> well, not a joke. Well, look, I'm we'll see. This. <laughs> we'll, we'll have you here all split to work on that paper, scissors, rock game. Oh, no. But for now, Shone Fire doesn't really need to work on too much more. He's orchestrated a perfect dub in their first game of the LCO for 2023, uh, PGG. Lucky to have him, happy to have him. 75% KP on the Vi, no kills either, making sure that was fed to the AD. Something else that stood out to me is that Shonfai was able to grab that Herald very early on into the game and he dropped it straight in bot lane and that resulted in the Illusion picking up a Gale Force very, mm -hmm. on, uh, very early on into the game and that's also a huge reason why the second dive worked so well in PG's favor. So huge props to Shonfai, although he died once at the very end of the game, but uh, in our hearts he never died. I won't talk about the mechanical misplays on In the dive. <laughs> That's right. I, I, I like leaving it there. You know, we've got we've got another game to get to. Third game of the day. That's coming up just after the break. Strap yourselves in because it will be the final game today. And that, of course, is going to be Direwolves up against Mammoth. We'll see you after this. Happy can tank this. Unbelievable. Can Anthus get anything he can to do? Top lane is the logical next lane of progression here. Oh! Oh! oh Kissy! What was that? That's a beautiful flip, and that might be the fight that wins you this championship. They're gonna go on through. Order has done it! For the first time ever, are gonna win their own championship titles. He's gonna chuck out a rocket. They're jumping across the wall. The rocket does nothing. Vulcan's gone. The Drake is being picked up. Now they can run up. Can they buy more time? Chief stuck. Here we go! Oh my it. god! He steals the Baron! How does he do it? Slow before the Tally rocks up. It wasn't falling down that quickly. At least he gets knocked into the steam. He's in smite range. He steals the Baron! Range. You're kidding me! You are absolutely kidding me! How on earth have peace done this? It's a Penta! It's the first of the year! Locks them down. Razor looked like he was about to get excited to get the resets. They're going to teleport for keeping... Look how close the turrets are falling down. It's so close, it's so it's close so man. It's so close. It's a stone's throw. <laughs> it's only 28 more auto attacks. Oh, dearie me. There's a, okay, how many control ones does it take to, to, to control the river? <laughs>